Hey everyone, hopefully you're doing well. Welcome to the Jesus King podcast. We're here with Abe again. How you doing, Abe? Doing well, man. God bless you, bro. <laughs> it's it's always it's always good to um do these podcast videos with you and Emil. Mm. Um, I really I re I really enjoy it um, yeah. because the one that we did with Emil previously, we did like a two part series, mm -hmm. and it was in regards to carrying your cross. And, and that was very enjoyable. Um, well, we've spoken about how God designed marriage. Yeah. We also spoke about, um, you know, what you can do within marriage mm. when it comes to, obviously, um, the sex part of marriage. Yeah. Yeah. But obviously marriage is not only about sex. No, there course. is much more to marriage than just a sexual relationship. Yeah. 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 Um, of course, there's a lot more to marriage than sex. But one of the things is, and especially in today's day, it's like the majority of people have broken sexual pasts that, mm. that then affects every area of their marriage once they do get married, right? You know, it affects the way that they trust each other. It affects the way that they're intimate with each other. And I'm not just talking spirit, um, sexually, but also like emotionally, um, you know, they bring that baggage in instead of allowing, and we'll talk about this maybe in the next one, but instead of allowing God to kind of redefine the way that they're viewing marriage and sexuality and, and the way they view their spouse, you know, like we talked about in the first part, being one with each other, you know? And so we have to be very careful about what we're bringing in to the marriage from our past life, you know? Mm. Good. Yeah. In, 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 in saying that, it it does um, have an effect where people might have, for example, different sexual partners mm. or different relationships yeah. um, in the yeah. past. And often, sometimes they try and compare their past relationship yeah. to their current marriage. Or they, they want desperately that um, the same thing that happened in their last relationship doesn't have been in their current, in their marriage. Yeah. So like... They're so desperate. I don't want it to end the same way. So I'm going to do, I'm going to like project completely on my spouse. And like, if I had a controlling partner in my last relationship, I'm going to make sure I dominate my wife or my, in the marriage, I'll dominate her and be very authoritative so that she's not controlling over me. Cool. So, yeah. so you're basically like a wounded animal yeah, yeah. coming into this relationship. Projecting all the insecurities of past relationships into this new one. And that's very destructive. Oh, that, that's, that's pretty sad because the person that's actually going to be suffering is the person that's coming into this marriage, mm. um, you know, with you. Uh, it, well, if that's the case, I think it's very wise for a couple to discuss these things. Of course. And even in saying that sometimes it's not, just the relationships you've been in even it could be and this is something that my wife and i we discussed before we got married as well sometimes it's the relationship your parents had that can influence certain things and sometimes there's things that your parents modeled that it's not really you know the design of god or you know there were certain things that um kind of took a bit of a fleshly turn in the marriage that then has an impact on you. And then you bring that into the marriage, your marriage, or you bring that, you have an idea of what marriage should be, that it's not really what God designed. Okay. You know? So basically looking at your parents and thinking, for example, you, you're, up, you're, you're being brought up in a, say, for example, a bad environment, mm. right? Um, your parents are not having a healthy marriage. They might be taking their stress on each other or on you. Mm. And you are growing up thinking that this might be the norm. Yeah. And like, let's say they're not, even if they're not really abusive, but you don't see that they love each other. You don't see that they're one with each other. You don't see that they cherish each other. Mm. Right. This is something that even I, we probably all need to work on in our relationship when, as we have kids that we need to show our children how much we value our spouse. I know I need to do better with that. And I think we, we all can, but as we're, um, pro, you know, we're influencing, we're molding our kids so that they don't propagate or, or 
they don't reproduce the same um, failures that we have, right? Mm. So we need to start modeling it, you know, in our marriages now. Yeah. So you know. in in also thinking about it this way that because um, sometimes as adults we're a bit ignorant mm. on how um, how good the kids' memories are, oh, right? Of course. Especially when they experience strong emotions when it comes to certain situations whether there is great love and joy mm -hmm. that emotion and that experience stays with them mm -hmm. they remember it. but at the same time where there is a lot of fear and security um they also experience of that course. and remember it so for example if if there is an abusive relationship where they might see um the dad for example physically abusing mm -hmm. the mother mm -hmm. That's not something that a child will forget. It's something that of they're going to grow up with and it might be a trauma, something that they need to be healed yeah. from. Yeah. Yeah. And this, this is why, like when your kids get to a certain age, you know, they, you need to start communicating with them about these things. Even there, there are times where in our, our household, our marriage, you know, there might be moments of intensity and argument or what, whatnot. And sometimes you might think your children are not really observing, but they're absorbing everything. And there are times where my wife and I will both go out to our son and our daughter and like, you know, we had a bit of a heated battle, but we love you and we're okay. Mm -hmm. Everything's all right, you know. And, you know, you communicate that with them and then you show them love and you show how you reconcile. And that actually helps them because it helps them to be able to, in their future relationship, be like, yeah, there's going to be bad moments, but now we know how to resolve it. We know how to reconcile it in a way that, you know, because we're sinful people trying to, you know, get along with each other. Yeah. We know how We're to reconcile. Perfect. You know, True. we know how to do it God's way. Yeah. You know, not take it out on the kids, mm. not bring the kids in to, you know, take sides, things like that. You know, um, there are so many sinful and fleshly ways that you can try to resolve a situation. But the godly way is to communicate um, in a loving way, to to put the needs of others in before your own and that might be conceding your own point even if you think you're right you're like you know what it's not worth the trauma it's not worth the the um the baggage that is going to be unloaded on these children or even my wife you know so there's times where you need to have a lot of wisdom and so well i i guess establishing that especially starting our podcast mm. this way mm. it shows that um having a difficult marriage it impacts more than just the parents of just course. the husband and the wife um you've basically got an audience there 24 7 watching everything you say everything mm. you do um and the way you treat each other mm. and your relationship with your husband and wife will be impacting on your children of course of so course. I, I think that's a good way to start the video that that is and um i think it's because uh it's one of those things that i think god does in the way that he structures marriage he does that so that we can be aware that the marriage is not just about us it's not just about me mm. you know it's a selfless thing it's like what how i act how i behave how i think it's going to affect not just my wife but it will affect her but it will affect the children who we have been, we have the obligation of protecting emotionally, psychologically, spiritually, mm. right? That's my obligation. That's my responsibility. And if I act self, selfishly, that's going to be detrimental to them if I, in the marriage. But if I act in a loving way and selflessly to my wife, then they're going to benefit from it. And they're going to be, they're going to be so blessed by that. And so that's something that I have to continually remind myself. Like when I come home from work, I'm tired. And I'm like, there's times where I just, you know, you want to project or take things out on your wife because, you know, things aren't what you want it to be. And you're like, well, that's not the way I should act. I've got kids who are watching me right now. They need to see that I love my wife. They need to see that I cherish them. I come home, give them a big hug, give them a big kiss, you know, tell them that I love them, you know, that kind of thing. So we've got to be very intentional with the way cool. that we behave. Well, we, we can discuss a few things, I guess, and, and that can be a good advice in the sense of um, building up a biblical 
healthy atmosphere in the house. Because mm-hmm. um, sometimes, <clears throat> like, um, and you might even hear some families as you walk past the house, like there's so much screaming oh, yeah. going on. Yeah, yeah. Like you don't even need to be inside that house to to understand the state of it. Rather, it's just by you being a neighbor, mm-hmm. you can basically hear everything. And if you hear that and you feel like, oh, that's a bit unsettling, how much more would maybe the children mm. be yeah, there? Exactly. Or your, your wife or the husband, right? So I guess what kind of things can we bring into the marriage? And obviously, you know, we're not trying to, in a sense, like, hey, act like everything is fine. Yeah, so no, your kids no. think everything is going well. No, no, it's, we want a good marriage, yeah. um, a healthy relationship between a husband and wife for the sake of the husband and wife as well. So it's not only exactly. for the sake of the kids, it's for everybody. Yeah. You want to experience joy yeah. in your in your marriage and your family. Yeah. Good mm-hmm. marriage should benefit everybody. Mm-hmm. Everyone should be well taken care of, respected, and loved. Of course. If any party is not res- receiving respect or love, that means there's something wrong. Put it down and build again. Mm-hmm. Get it right. Okay. So what advice would you be sharing? And you, you're married, you've got kids as well as I am. Uh, what advice would you give to say these little things made, for example, maybe a difference in your marriage? Mm. Or mm. maybe you might think of a biblical example of it. One, See, of, the, one of the... I'm yeah, getting you to think. You're now. getting me to think. One, <laughs> no, one of the things that really um, had me was there was a saying, a broken cistern doesn't give water. Right, it can't it can't overflow mm-hmm. into lives, right? So you know that you know there's a phrase, "My cup runneth over," that David speaks of. <clears throat> when you're close with God, and you have an intimate relationship with Him, your heart and your spirit is so full that it overflows into your wife and into your family, and so they're reaping the benefits of your relationship with God, your closeness to God. But the moment you stray away from that. And you become, you know, we are all broken sisters. We're always, you know, the way um, Charles Spurgeon kind of um, spoke about it. He's like, we're, we're cisterns that we're constantly receiving the fountain of water from Christ, but we're still leaking. If you're not continually being, um, being filled by the Spirit, being filled by the Word of God, eventually it empties out and you have nothing left to give, right? And so... There are times where I feel like I have nothing left to give to my kids, to my wife. And it's because I've had a time away from the Word of God. I've had time away from God. I've had time away from fellowship with the Spirit, right? And then you're like, I have nothing left to give, right? Because you're not close with God. You're not close with the one being in the universe who can actually restore you and give you the strength and give you the grace, right? And this was one of the convictions I had and I still have where I'm like, come to the heart of the issue get to god and then you'll be able to serve let him restore and then you'll be able to feed into the lives of your your family so he will give you the strength to be like you know what i need to be selfless and serve all right i need to come to my wife and serve her and be like you're not my wife but you know yeah i know i was like oh i'm getting worried (laughs) (laughs) Um, especially if your wife has a beard yeah yeah. i'll I'll get really worried there (laughs) she's she's not an arab i joke i joke um sorry for the arab (laughs) yeah no so like my my issues when i'm away from god are very different to my issues when Mm -hmm. i'm with god it's so much easier to feed Uh, i like i like that perspective because you know, when, when we have something, for example, as we're talking about broken marriage, um, sometimes we just look down and we're like, okay, where's the problem? Mm-hmm. Let's fix mm-hmm. it. And what you just said, you said, okay, don't first, you, you, you're obligated to do that. That's, that's your duty. But then before you look down and fix it, look up and say, God, where's the problem in me? Yeah. yeah. And <clears throat> why am I so empty? Yeah. Fill me up so I can be, an overflowing uh, vessel yeah. full of blessing and love and compassion and care 
yeah. um, to give to my family. Yeah. I, I like that. I like how you're sharing first. It's, that. it's, it's kind of like, I always, I always bring, I love this example of King Asa in the, in the Bible where he had this disease in his feet and he went all around the world looking for a cure, but didn't come to God mm. first. Mm. And God's like, because you didn't come to me, you're going to die. Mm. It, it, it's going to lead to destruction. You know, the moment we find that there's issues in our relationships, in our marriages, in our family, things are not going as we want them to. We're like, all right, let's go marriage counseling. I'm not ditching, dissing all that, sorry. But we'll go like, oh, let's go to a psychologist. Let's go to a marriage counselor. Let's go to, you know, our family. Let's go to our friends. You know, let's, you know, read up on, um, you know, on Google and see where the issue is. Let's try everything mm. before we go to God. You know what I mean? Yeah. We give God the scraps after it's all destroyed, you know, instead of being like, you know what, let's get to the root of the problem. Let's get to the source of it. You know, are we praying for our families? Are we having time and communion in the Lord? You know, I, one of the things that we, like I was convicted with me and my wife and I, we're like, we need to have at least once, twice a week where we bring the family and we worship God and we have like Bible study time together as a family, right? That way we're coming all together closer to God. And as, you know, it's like the pyramid, right? We, we see the husband, the wife, if they're both coming closer to God, they get closer to each other, you know? Yeah. I like that. Give so, me. so it's like that with your family as well, with your kids. If you teach your kids to get close to God, then we're all coming closer to God together, and we're all going to be a lot closer with each other. We're going to have a stronger family unit than if we're all trying to better ourselves individually. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Because we live in a day and age where it's like, take care of yourself first before you can take care of others. It's mm -hmm. not really the biblical method. The myth biblical method is come close to God. And you will come close to each other and and start selflessly fulfilling the needs of the other people in your family because as you're coming close to god the spirit will convict you and say well you're not serving your wife correctly mm. you're not loving her correctly you're not cherishing her correctly you know you're not doing your obligation as a husband you're not fulfilling it to her you're not meeting her emotional needs those kind of things and then if she's coming close to god the Holy Spirit will convict her and saying, well, you're not meeting his needs either, right? Mm. So it's like the best marriage counseling ever yeah. because it's the Spirit of God. It's God and you can't really debate that. Let, you know? let the Holy Spirit do his job. <laughs> exactly. Mm. So, yeah, so I know I know in our relationship, in our marriage, the moments where it's the hardest are the moments where we, we're both drawing a bit away from mm. God and from his word. And that also reminds me of Matthew 7. <clears throat> I think it's Matthew 7. Yeah, just right in the beginning of Matthew 7. Um, is speaking about um, judging others in hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. And he speaks yeah. about, you yeah. know, trying to point that little speck in, 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 in the your brother's eyes. eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you forget a big log in your own eye. Yeah. Um, and, and sometimes in marriage, we would point others' faults. Of course. You know, especially if we are empty from the spirit, from his word, that we're not seeing things the way God yeah. Um, you know you're judging it, judging it according to the flesh yeah and according to what you're seeing here yeah, yeah. And, and and then you, you'll find out at the end of all this when finally you know god opens up your eyes to it you recognize that well the problem most likely was not my partner no it no. was here all along it was me but i was way too blind to see it yeah and as a husband if i am spiritually blind how could I lead my wife? That's right. If anything, I'm just leading in the wrong path and we're going to fall into a ditch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and that's the whole thing you were saying that you and <clears throat> you and Emil had, um, you talked about carrying our cross and carrying the cross. You know, we always look at that as a, a place of suffering and it is, but also in that carrying of the cross, there's so much joy because you know that it's God who sustains you and God has given you your strength to do that. And having a family and leading a family is a huge cross mm. to bear, especially for a man. Wait, wait, wait. Our, our wives are watching this. <laughs> are you saying marriage is carrying a cross? Yes, it is. But you know, Ooh. it's interesting because my wife will say that as well. Like, you know, she'll be like this, <laughs> you know, raising children, it's a huge cross to bear. I'm like, yes, of course it is. But the thing <laughs> is, when you're carrying that cross, who is it that's sustaining you? You know, it's not yourself. It's not your flesh. It's the spirit of God. And you, you see that grace. 
You know, I love you, man. Martin, Martin's got Martin's. Martin doesn't want to uh, comment I'm, I'm here because he wife, knows his wife is. <laughs> marriage is not a cross. There you go. <laughs> I disagree with Abraham. There, uh, I'm just joking. Um, well, th there are times where marriage does feel like a cross. Yeah, I understand yeah. that. Uh, but ultimately, I know you were joking as well that marriage is not a cross. Mm. It is a blessing from it's a God. Blessing, yeah. It's something that God has or ordained in, yeah. in the life of a man and a woman to come together and experience that oneness. Mm. Um, this is one of the, um, I guess, if you ever think about what is the purpose of marriage, is that oneness that mm. is united in Christ and in love. Mm. And that's why, as we shared in, in the first video, that Adam said, I'm coming to this woman mm. and I'm going to become one with her. And it's interesting that this Hebrew word one, which is echad, is used the same Hebrew word in Deuteronomy. To the Lord your God them, yeah. is one, is echad. Mm. So if we look at the unity of the Trinity in, in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and we see that love, the way they serve each other, the way they fulfill their purposes mm. w within the plan of creation, salvation, and their glory, glory right? Mm. Um, we can start to implement some of that into our own lives. For example, even though Christ was equal to the Father, he took on the form of a servant and to, to fulfill the will of God, the mm. will of the Father. When Christ went to heaven, he sent the Spirit. And in the Gospel of John, Jesus says that the Spirit um, does not speak on his own accord. He speaks what is revealed mm -hmm. to him. And everything that he does glorifies me. Right? Even though the Spirit is equal to Christ, the, the ministry of the Spirit is to glorify the Son. Mm -hmm. And you get 1 Corinthians 12 on that right in the beginning. Um, it, anyone who says that Christ is Lord, he's speaking in the spirit. He's speaking from the spirit. Mm -hmm. That's the truth. Yeah. But everyone that says Christ is accursed, that's not from the Holy Spirit. So if we can see the triune God who is equal, mm -hmm. right, in their attributes, serve one another. I, I guess that's a good image for a yeah. marriage. To, to flourish that, yes, I am equal um, in the sense of my value to, towards my wife and my wife is equal in, in our marriage, but that doesn't mean I can't serve my wife mm. or if I serve my wife, I am degrading myself. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, so that was <clears throat> kind of what we were touching on with masculinity as well. It's like, yeah, you have different roles, right? But both roles exist to serve one another. Mm. Right. So I have the role to protect and provide for my wife. That's my way of serving her. Mm. Right. And then for, a, for the wife, there are roles that she, her fulfilling in her obligations that she then um, fulfills in order to serve me. And so we're constantly supposed to be trying to serve one another, trying to um, meet the needs of the other spouse and that's where the blessing is so it's like i'm always trying to meet her needs she's always trying to meet my needs and there's blessing right but like i said a broken cistern can't do that you need to be filled with god you need to be filled with his word right yeah and you need to receive healing, healing because yeah. a broken cistern as much as you put into it yeah it's always it's, going to empty yeah, it's out. always going to leak yeah and um, that's where restoration in the gospel if it, it's it, it's an umbrella that covers over that as well, over your marriage, over relationships, your past, everything. Um, and we'll talk about that in, in the next one as well, in the next part, where there has to be restoration. You have to kind of, you know, break those bonds, break those things that you're still bringing into the marriage. Like you shouldn't be. It's, you should be clearing your mind of that. You know, if God has forgotten it and he's forgiven you for it, so should you. You know what I mean? Yeah. So um, there's things that we're supposed to not be projecting on our spouse and not bringing in. It has nothing to do with them. It has to do with us and our past. And so we're, you know, it, that's the journey of sanctification as well. We're being sanctified where, you know, God is cleansing us of things and 
He's cleansing us daily. And God is going to reveal to us more and more and more <clears throat> what we need to rid ourselves of in order in order to serve our spouse more yeah. and how we can glorify God together. Because ultimately, this is one of the things that we have to reiterate and re-emphasize. Marriage itself is not an end in itself. So the reason you're married is for what? It's to glorify God. It's to come together with a purpose to fulfill the will of God in your lives, right? Because you want to minister for the Lord. You want to preach the gospel for the Lord. You want to go out and share his glory with the world, right? In order to do that, you need to be in sync. You need to be in harmony. You need to be one. Yeah. So, well, we're coming <clears throat> close to the end of it. You, you would conclude that there's always going to be hope of course, for broken marriages. Of course, of course. Always. That's, that's the tenet of the, the Christian faith, is there's always hope, mm -hmm. you know? And that hope is in Christ. The, that hope is in the gospel. It's in the message. You know? Yeah. It, you could look at Hosea as an example, yeah. um, where God is demonstrating his love to his people Israel, saying even though they prostituted themselves that's yeah that's going to yeah. be the next part as well oh, yeah, we're, we're going okay. to touch on that um but that's that's an awesome example of it um the fact that god has restored us he has bought us no matter our past mm. right and as a believer and if you have a spouse who has a past you're not in any way supposed to dredge that up and bring that up as a weapon against them that's sin because you're doing what god himself doesn't do he doesn't bring up your past does he no he doesn't. He's, he, he puts Thank in the sea of, i know hey. <laughs> um and it's it's funny because even in your daily life even in your sanctification there's there are moments of weaknesses and there are moments where you do sin and even then when god has forgiven he doesn't bring it up again it's cool. such a beautiful thing and that's how relationships and marriages yeah. should be as well well in you saying that, could we also maybe discuss in the next video in regards that even though uh, we might have broken past and dark past, that we're called to be faithful to each other of course. in marriage. Yeah, I yeah, think we yeah. can, we that's, can that's part it. of that restoration of brokenness. As cool. Well. Yeah. well, do you have any conclusion? Yeah, I, on, honestly, I, I think this was a, a huge blessing just to kind of re-emphasize and, um, and to remind ourselves mm -hmm. that marriage is selfless it's it's something that requires the self to diminish it's, it's kind of like what what um john said about jesus you know i you know i decrease so that he increases in my life i must decrease that christ may increase in my life and that it's his strength that i'm relying on mm -hmm. it's him living in me that way i can serve my wife i can serve my spouse i can serve my family and vice versa if you're both believers that's a huge blessing because mm. it's like the spirit is in harmony and you know your your children will be blessed by that your family will be blessed by that yeah cool well the the only thing i, I would say um to be honest with you a broken marriage um there's no one winner out of no, it of both course. are of losing of um the only person that's taking advantage of your marriage is the devil yeah so I would close it in this to encourage you to pray for your marriage. If you're married and you're feeling that um, your marriage is not going the way God intended it to be, or there is no joy or, um, you know, you've lost love for each other. I just encourage you that there is always hope um, just because a marriage is broken or going through a tough time. That doesn't mean that marriage is gonna end in a divorce or it's mm. over god hates divorce and god is is the expert when it comes to fixing things like mm. that mm. please as abraham was sharing that you go to god and let him fill you and because of that fullness you're going to be pouring out love compassion care forgiveness um, and a blessing to your partner and Amen. to your children. Amen. So we'll close it at that. And we're going to end it with the last part. And we're, we're still going to be talking to, um, yeah. in a, with a similar yeah. thing. I think we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll talk about how, how in the gospel, part of that is redemption in sexuality. Like, cool. you know, 
cool yeah. well uh, we're not gonna spill too much yeah well, no, well you have to listen come on. <laughs> yeah god bless you all and we'll see you next time take care see you guys